check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. One of these units on your screen have never before been featured on a YouTube video. Yes, this is a data bits first. I am showing you a format that no one else has taken the time to show you in person. But all the rest of these formats on the screen have been shown on the data bits channel before. In fact, if you have seen my last video, you got to see this beauty of a machine right here. This little guy plays miniature records. So if you want to see some more about him, be sure and go back and watch my last video. I still think this is the coolest looking thing ever. Geniuses who designed this thing. All right, that leaves us with just tape formats here on your screen. We'll start with probably the most popular of the small cassette formats surviving all of these format wars because back in the 60s and 70s, handheld dictation devices were extremely popular with business people and many companies rushed the scene to try and create a format that would stay. And micro cassette was probably the most popular. This is a micro cassette recorder from Radio Shack. It's a later model. Uh, I don't see a date on here anywhere, unless that is a date code right there, which in case it might be from 99. But uh, this is a neat little device, solid built, uh, lightweight as well. And what was cool about it is you could plug your handset of your regular desk telephone into it, and you could record your conversations in two speeds. It also has voice activation, which means that if someone wasn't talking, it wasn't recording. And when they would start talking again, the recording would continue. So pretty cool. Uh, let's see, where's our eject button? Does this even have one? Oh, there it is. So this is a micro cassette. This is a Maxell MC60, okay? All of you are familiar with the regular compact cassette which is what this Panasonic is. I found this recently in my travels. What's unusual about this particular recorder is that it has 3x recording time. So you have the ability to click this little switch right here, right by my thumb, and get three times the recording amount on a single compact cassette. Not very good for music, of course, but superb for voice recording. It also has a setting on here where with the microphone, you can switch between like room recording and up close recording simply by moving this little switch in and out. Very cool. Got a pause control right here on the front, right there. And you've got your uh, voice activated system right here and the sensitivity level is right here via this little switch. Got a volume control, a mic jack, earphone jack. This one, it's been a while, but we covered this one on the DataBits channel before. And this particular unit is called the Stenacord Reminder. And there's the cassette for it. This is a rim drive machine, which means it does not have a capstan. And a capstan was incorporated to help the unit always play at the same constant rate of speed. Our next one is probably the biggest competitor to micro cassette, and this is mini cassette. So with mini cassette, this slides open here. Tape fits inside there. This is also a rim drive unit, not capstan driven. So inside are these little turntables that actually do the pulling of the tape versus a belt. This unit I attempted to repair, and I have repaired one of these before, 
but this one did not survive the repair process. In fact, there's a little turntable uh, roller type thing rolling around on the inside because I'll probably use this for spare parts going forward. And last but not least, this is the one we're going to feature today. And this is called the Sankyo Micro Mini Recorder. So this cassette is one I had not been aware of until recently. Ran across it by accident. This is the MTC-10. It's made by Sankyo. You may be familiar with Sankyo because they made lots of great Super 8 movie projectors. On the top of the unit here, we have a stop button, record, play, a fast forward cue, and review, rewind button, microphone, record, battery, LED indicator. This unit is capstan driven, and I believe it runs at 15, 16 inches per second. On the left side here, we have mic, we have remote, we have an earphone jack, and then we have our DC 3 volt input right there. Up here at the top, we have a volume control. The back is actually missing this piece right here, the, uh, the, the label that goes into that spot. And unfortunately, this one's got a little dent in it, so it was apparently dropped at some point. So I couldn't get this unit to record even after cleaning all the switches and so forth. But um, I did make a recording, and I'll tell you in a bit how I did that. And we'll listen to that recording. But I wanted you to look at this cassette. So here it is, the Sankyo Micro Mini. Or is it Mini Micro? Micro Mini. It looks just like a compact cassette, really. But there is the comparison in size to a full tape, full size tape. Compare that to the famous micro cassette. Very similar, but not compatible with one another. And then we'll compare it to the mini cassette. So there's our mini and our mini micro, micro mini. Okay. This one is formatted just like a regular cassette. The tape runs from left to right, and for side A, it records on the bottom half of the tape, which means I could do something really cool. What I did is I took the tape out of this guy, and I wound it into this one, but I did that after I had put this in my tape deck and recorded something at half speed, what did I record? I recorded this reel-to-reel -reel tape that I found at the Record Exchange here in St. Louis. Look them up. They're a very cool store. So this is some type of training tape that was used for people who worked in the telephone industry. It was recorded at 3 and 3 fourths inches per second. It's from March of 1970 another little piece of paper in here it says all rights of management enterprises and of the authors of this material reserved unauthorized use sale or reproduction is prohibited such abuse will be subject to legal action and then it's got property of management enterprises it says course listening 149-9 set it looks like I 149 149 okay so apparently this had some visuals with it. It either had a film strip or it had slides that went with it because there are audible tones on the tape. So as it's playing, there's little beeping sounds going on to trigger something, all right? Whether it's to trigger you to change the, the particular uh, page or, or change the slide, or it is to, uh, to automate something. During this tape, you will learn how to handle calls which are billed to a third telephone number. What does a third number consist of? A third telephone number is composed of an area code and a seven digit telephone number, a total of 10 digits, which must be keyed into the memory. Now 
Now, there are two different ways of handling third member calls. You should already be familiar with the first way. The customer will give an area code first, followed by a seven-digit number. Do you think you could key this billing number into the memory as it is being given? Yes, whenever the customer prefixes his order with an area code, you can handle the call just as you handled calls billed to a credit card or a special billing number. If an area code is not given first, can you key the third number as it is being given? No, you must first determine the area code. Therefore, calls not prefixed with an area code are handled differently. Bill this to my office phone, please. That's area code 919-837-837. 2615. Golden Triangle Motel, LD customer online. Please charge this call to area code 817-561-0902. Put the charges on my home telephone. It's area code 208-772-4380. I'd like to talk to Mr. C.C. Baker. Display the number you have keyed. Did you key 208-772-4380? Now release the display. All right, now that we've heard this beast, let's take it apart and show you what's making it work on the inside. Let's remove the cassette, and I'll show you the tape heads here. Got our uh, capstan and pen controller there on the left, our audio head there in the middle of your screen, got our erase head, and our take up and supply spindles. There is a switch here that I am not sure what it does. Filter off and on. This may have to do with recording off the radio. I've heard of MPX filters that were on big tape decks so that may be what that is but again because this doesn't record I'm not really able to test that to see what it does so there's two ways to take this apart basically two sections if you want to service the unit just go in and change the uh, the speed adjust the speed remove these three screws off the top and then this panel here with the speaker will reveal some interesting stuff for you to adjust. So I pull this cover off. Okay. So there's our speaker right here. This is our drive motor right here. And I believe this circuitry here is specifically for the motor speed regulation. Right here is a potentiometer that you can adjust to set the speed, which is what I've done in this circumstance with the unit. Okay, let's go ahead and put that back on. Not much else we can do with that right there. Seems like it would have been simpler to just put a hole there, say maybe right here. That way you could stick a screwdriver in there and adjust the speed. Okay, so those are three screws on the front. Let's flip it over. There's our batteries. We've got two screws here that we'll remove. So let's pull this cover off. So here you can see the uh, the belt that I replaced in this guy down here. Let's take a closer look. So you might be saying, how in the world would you find a belt that fits? Well, I had some laying around and I put one in there and it was too tight and it actually caused the machine to play very, very slow because of course this motor is old, so it's probably not as strong as it has been in the past or maybe it's just not made to be that strong in the first place. But I bought a belt kit off of eBay, recent discovery, 
and this belt kit just included a bunch of random belts. I'll put a link down in the description. And I recommend that if you're tinkering with these kinds of things, tape decks, tape recorders, that uh, you order one of those belt kits. This is some kind of an interference shield that's in here. It's, it's just aluminum and cardboard. Sometimes it eliminates hum in the system or prevents interference. So to replace the belt, there's really just these two screws to remove. And then you'll see, you'll see right here, there is a clip right there that's holding a, this bundle of wires in place. So if you remove that clip, lift that clip up, pull this bundle of wires out, then you can get in there and replace the drive belt, which you see here. So one of the belts from the kit was perfect, got the machine running really nicely, and you saw there's just a minimal of uh, flutter there as we heard those tones. Really quite acceptable amounts of flutter for such a small device, especially running at 15 16 inches per second. So very easy to service this unit. And it does have one of those record switches that needed to be cleaned, and I did clean it. Most tape decks do have one of these slide switches right here and spray some contact cleaner down inside there and then cycle record off and on. So it did not have to replace any caps in the unit, which is very nice. This is kind of interesting. This, uh, this little ribbon cable here goes up to this top piece here and controls uh, the lights and uh, the microphone signal. So what do you guys think? Pretty cool little device. And that's how you would service one of these. The best part about it, when I removed the old belt, it was okay. It was just a floppy stretched belt, but there was no gum in there that I had to clean off, which is always a welcomed feature. And there you have it, my friends, the Sankyo Micro Mini MTC-10. That will conclude our video. Hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe. Share it with 3,000 of your friends. Also, share it on Facebook, Twitter, wherever else you happen to hang out. Also, uh, you can follow me on those places, Facebook and Twitter, using the links below. want to say a special thanks to my Patreon subscribers, my Patreon patrons who have helped fund this video. If you'd like to become a Patreon contributor, you can do so at the link in the description. Thank you for watching.